It's Monday. It's February 24th. And the word of the day is nomophobia, which means the anxiety of being without a cell phone. Hmm. Used in a sentence, get over the nomophobia and find some dopamine by interacting with a physical human in the meat world. Ooh. Nobody cares what you said on Facebook. Fucking it was not clever. Luddite. You want pictures of bulldogs, Heath? Because the phone is where the <laughs> bulldogs are, Heath. <laughs> That's it. The fact that they were one letter away from nomophonia and didn't use that proves we put the wrong people in charge of neology. <laughs> I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we'll lend a whole new meaning to smeared in the press. We'll talk about Navy SEAL come astronaut George Santos. <laughs> and Donald Trump orders food at McDonald's. Super duper Big Mac Lee. Well, but first the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, let's start with a positive note on the show. What's the best piece of art that you consumed in the last year? Ooh. Uh, uh, kids versus wizards. Get excited about tomorrow's game, people. Get Heck excited. Yeah. It's, it's the best movie. See, I was going to say D and D minus available on all podcast players, oh, well, yeah, but I I, I, I changed mine okay. to Kids versus Wizards. I didn't right. realize. <laughs> I was you recognize have to our limitations. That's a yeah, thing. obviously. Ooh, our- I have a joke. I have a joke. It's not mine. It's from uh, BFF April Poff. Ooh, April. I was joke. silently mad at you for just being like, I have a joke to tell that's not mine. <laughs> but now that it's April Poff, I'm no, back it, in. No, it's I'm April. Back in. Okay. April wrote, a magician and a juggler walk into a bar. Bartender says, let's start a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> excellent. That's that. excellent. Very good. Well done. In our lead story tonight, uh, what we needed was infrastructure week. Right? <laughs> <laughs> At least that is according to the National Transportation Safety Board's preliminary report on the investigation to the toxic train derailment in Ohio. Uh, now, to be clear, the, the report is very sparse on blame. It offers up a lot of new details and it makes it super clear that the accident was entirely avoidable, but it stopped short of saying who and what could have stopped it. That being said, it's super duper clear that Norfolk Southern, which posted a record four point eight billion billion dollar profit last year was cutting a lot of figurative corners before this train decided to try to cut a literal one and the end result was spilling 115,000 gallons of cancer all over the fucking place and then setting it on fire because that was ever so slightly less dangerous than leaving it to seep into the groundwater. Yeah, sorry, no, I'm no scientist, but I refuse to believe that quick set it on fire is going to be a solution looked on <laughs> yeah. fondly by history. <laughs> Feels like that Builder Bridge out of her guy from Monty Python was in charge of safety and he just yeah. yelled something. <laughs> He's like, fly a plane into the track. I don't know. Uh, controlled burn. We're doing a controlled burn. Sorry, I panicked. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, though the sad thing is is that they were literally in a position where set fire to the toxic chemicals probably was the best thing they could do. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, we didn't talk about this in our last episode, but this derailment happened back on February 3rd in East Palestine, Ohio, which is situated about midway down Ohio's border with Pennsylvania. Uh, it was apparently caused by an overheated axle that caused the brakes to fail. That resulted in a car slipping off the tracks and taking another 36 cars with it, including 11 that were carrying hazardous materials. Uh, these included flammable and combustible liquids, uh, one of which was vinyl chloride, which is apparently carcinogenic as all hell. Uh, the whole thing caught on fire and burned for two days, leading to hundreds of residents being evacuated. And then once it burned out, officials decided to do a controlled burn on a bunch of the remaining shit uh, in case the area didn't have enough hydrogen chloride, phosgene, and dioxins in its air yet. Okay. I mean, you don't move to the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania and pronounce your town wrong to get away from airborne chloride. Okay. okay. Don't love that Eli's asking what the people of East Palestine were wearing, but uh, okay, when when you're wearing MAGA hats, no, I was going <laughs> to have say. trouble staying ethical in my head based on that principle or whatever. Yeah. I definitely feel bad for some people in East Palestine. I, I, I feel bad for all of them. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, holy fuck, dude, can one axle getting super hot really take down a whole fucking train and contaminate a whole fucking town at a moment's notice? And the answer is yes, and you're probably not terrified enough yet. <laughs> um, now, there are preventative measures in place for this kind of thing. Uh, along the tracks, there are a bunch of defect detectors that are supposed to be able to alert trains of a bunch of different kind of problems, including an overheated axle. And apparently this train passed over three of those after the axle started to overheat. 
Uh, but I guess there's not a defect detector defect detector because the first two didn't catch the problem. And by the third one, it was too late. Yeah. To be fair, that third one is just a guy named Alan who will text you train done flipped over. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, we run Alan through the detector detector. That's an extra safeguard, right? And then, well, okay, what he sends five letters to Dave who sends five letters to other people. <laughs> right, yeah. And then it's safe forever. Uh, now, Infinite. It's also worth pointing out that there's an advanced type of braking system that actually would have worked despite the overheated axle here. And there used to be a rule that required all trains to have those types of brakes installed by 2021 if they carried hazardous materials. But Trump scrapped that rule in a fit of deregulation back in 2018. Uh, a fact that did not stop him from showing up in East Palestine and blaming Biden for the disaster. Specifically, he faulted Biden for spending all our money arming Ukrainians instead of doing what a good president would do, which is, I guess, ransom that money to Ukrainians in exchange for political favors and then also make trains work better. Yeah, I'd express my frustration that literally everything bad in the last seven years has been the result of Donald Trump, but... As a nation still dealing with Reaganomics, it feels a little out of order to point yeah. it out. All right, <laughs> listen, as an economist, I have to point out that the supply curve and the demand curve for giant cancer explosions uh, it <laughs> met in East Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the elegant solution if you think about yeah. it mathematically. Yeah, and as a history buff, I should point out that we're also still dealing with Andrew Jackson shit in this country, <laughs> too. So I'm not an economist. Uh, it'll linger. Um, now... As to the long-term effect of this thing, it's anybody's guess, right? The, the chemical spill is estimated to have already killed over 40,000 fish, crustaceans, and marine mammals. Uh, now, state officials insist that the ground and the air testing is well within safe uh, levels, but residents are telling a different story. Uh, they're complaining about chemical smells in the air, constant coughs, burning throats, and, of course, plummeting home values. Uh, and again, these, these are people who already lived in Ohio to begin with, so they have a super high threshold for all of those things. No, uh, I get what you're hinting at here. Buddy houses with a built-in legal payout in a few years? Say no more, <laughs> I'm in. I bet we could get one cheap, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but but there is at least one silver lining uh, in all of this for the town, other than the, like, the toxic silvery residue that's probably lining all the local waterways, that is. Uh, the East Palestine Bulldogs girls basketball team notched a win after the Bristol Panthers forfeited their scheduled match because of safety concerns in the aftermath of the accident. So, you know. Nice. Go dogs. Win is a win. That counts. Yeah, and... For the record, the mascot had three eyes before the incident, everybody, <laughs> so relax. And on that note, we're going to pause for a quick word from this week's first sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. If you've been listening to our shows for a while, you know that our podcasts serve as a venue of self-discovery for our very own Heath Enright. Okay. From what? his relationship to step-siblings to his feelings about Liz Warren, you, the listener, have gotten to discover things about his deepest self in real time no, with that, him. Those are, those are jokes. They're... Mostly jokes. Most of those are jokes. But not everyone is lucky enough to have a podcast to explore their feelings and darkest corners, and that's why there's therapy. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. BetterHelp, because this can't end well. Wait, what, what can't end well? Guys, got you don't know. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Liar Liar Sants on Fire News. Podcast listener, with so much going on in the world, the war in Ukraine, that train thing, other stuff, I feel like I should be talking about it. <laughs> Giving you the vital information you had two? and dick jokes you need to survive. Yes, I had two. He had one. However, I gave him the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, like Heath's compulsion to tell you about the time Ben Shapiro thought a wet vagina was a disease and Noah's need to tell you about old Nintendos, I must tell you the latest about Republican and compulsive liar <laughs> George Santos. He is the square root of negative one now. Like, where, where could he possibly go from here? He has new lies? 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure this will be a a hell of an adjustment from listeners who are used to you covering hard hitting stories like DNA testing Santa cookies and how often the barefoot Contessa gets her asshole licked. So exactly, it's a little departure yes. here, guys. Get <laughs> ready. Ease them out. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, George Santos is the Republican congressman for New York's third district because, try as we might, the tri-state area has not managed to saw off Long Island and let it float into the sea. Yeah, and even if we did, George Santos is the creator of Atlantis, right, the yeah, civilization. Exactly. So. <laughs> also, it's an island, Eli. What would you saw it off of? It's a Bugs Sorry. Bunny. It's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> I know, but... Yeah. <laughs> The bridges hold it there. Right. So George, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So George lied about pretty much everything before being elected. But since Republicans control Congress and he's going to vote the way they tell him to, nobody's really doing anything about it. Nobody, of course, except for that liberal bastion of the woke media, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in what was obviously intended to be a softball interview for Santos to come clean and get back in line with his party, Santos instead doubled down on several of his lies and added a few more to the mix because you can't host a face-eating lion on a talk show and hope it just stops eating faces because you're pointing cameras at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, but rarely could a studio have been more improved by a couple of face-eating lions, though, right? Agreed. Agreed. So first up, let's talk about Santos's claim to be Jewish. Now, CNN <laughs> points out that Santos has unironically claimed to be Jewish many times. Okay. Also bad to say that ironically. You would either yeah. way. Yeah. But in this interview, George took two different tactics to refute that narrative. Uh, the first is he claimed that he was joking when he said he was Jewish in a speech to his fellow Republicans. Um, he wasn't. And, and still second, bad, again, like as right, he was saying, jo- still bad. Ah, I'm Jewish, right? Jewish. As Look a at me. Jew, right? you Jewish, it, right? huh? But the second was that his grandparents, who he claims escaped the Holocaust, they didn't, were actually secret Jews. Is that a real thing? Enough? Yep. His proof huh. crypto juice, they call is it. that he has ordered, quote, <laughs> DNA test kits... And I've done four of them so far, and I'm just waiting for their return. <laughs> what? And actual For his blood. Jewish DNA? <laughs> I sent my saliva to 23andMe. Yeah, they sent me back a Star David patch for my jacket. Oh, That's <laughs> official. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's easy to tell faces. Jewish DNA because um, instead of a double helix, it has two intertwined pace. So. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> Uh, so then, of course, there's his acclaim to have attended an elite prep school. Uh, at first, he said that he attended under a different name. And now he's sticking with the story that, quote, I was there for six months of ninth grade, which I should point out is way different than his original claim of having gone to that school. And if it were true, the school would still have a record of him under any of his names, which they do not. <laughs> I-, I went... Invisibly. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, and perhaps most bizarrely of all, Santos was questioned about his fraudulent GoFundMe for a homeless veteran's dying dog. Come on. This is the third evilest possible thing. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked up. According to Rich Osthoff, Santos raised money online for his dying dog while Osthoff was homeless in 2016, but Santos never handed over the cash from the GoFundMe fundraiser. Santos claims he never had met or spoken to Ostov, saying the fundraiser was under his name, but run by someone else? These statements are countered by text messages provided by Ostov to CNN, where it is clear that they both communicated and spoke on the phone. Wow. Yeah. Santos also claims he was the captain of a championship volleyball team. Mm -hmm. Nope, absolutely Mm not. And... According to some random TikTok, Santos may have tried to poison some journalists with cupcakes. <laughs> and when one of them was like, I think there's poison in these, he was like, I'm taking them back. I'm taking them all back. <laughs> now, probably not a great source on that last one with the cupcakes, but like, how the fuck do you calibrate reliability for a claim about George Santos at this point? It's impossible. Thank you. I was so sad when I couldn't find a legitimate news source for the poison cupcake narrative. (laughs) But it is true in my heart, and I will say it till the day that I die. 
Oh, you could batteries. George Santos. We could just say whatever the fuck we want, I think. Exactly. Yeah. We are U.S. representatives from Long <laughs> Island. Yeah, I am George fucking Santos. Yeah. Kevin McCarthy doesn't care about us either. Uh, one last little <laughs> bit about George Santos. Uh, and now, this didn't come up in the Pierce Morgan interview, so I almost didn't talk about it, but I, I do have to mention it. This is actually not George Santos's first dog related crime. And Amish dairy farmer in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, claims that Santos stole fifteen thousand dollars worth of puppies from him. Come on! By writing him bad checks, which he has provided images of to various news outlets. It's insane. If I was trying to invent an evil fictional character, I'd be like, scam the homeless veterans dog fund and. A big puppy heist. Oh, really? That's taken? God damn it. Uh, Okay, he's a Republican. Yeah. Yeah, Nailed it. Yeah. So I guess the question is, what crimes will we discover George Santos hasn't done? Well, it's two weeks till the next episode, and I can't wait to see what happens in the meantime. If he's not a long dead historical character by then, I'm going to be disappointed. It's hard to ramp it up (laughs) from where he is in any other way. Jesus of Nazareth. (laughs) Jewish, because he started, he was first right? and then not. Yep. It's, mm-hmm. it's technically <laughs> correct. Next up in headlines, House Speaker, just barely, Kevin McCarthy, decided last week that the U.S. House of Representatives hasn't really done anything to investigate that whole violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy, and it's finally time to act now. Apparently, the House can form committees for stuff like that, but uh, McCarthy's new, and he doesn't know about all the features yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So instead... He called up the smartest investigator he knows, Tucker Carlson of Fox News. And he gave Tucker Carlson access to thousands of hours of security camera footage from inside the Capitol during the J6 attack. So that's going to be a Fox News exclusive provided to Fox by an employee of the American people. That's where we are. I'd say what's next having Jim Jordan investigate sexual abuse, but we're actually doing that also. Yeah. We have to stop having a democracy, yeah. everybody. We have to or, stop. Or, or try having a real one, one or the That'd other. That'd be great. No. No. Yeah, so the move by <laughs> McCarthy is actually a bit of a turn on this issue. He's actually been on the moderate end of the GOP regarding the attempted coup and all that stuff. I mean, yes, he's an idiot who pushed the big lie following the 2020 election, And yes, he voted against certifying Biden's win in two states just hours after the Capitol riot. He did that, too. And he's also a liar, by the way, because he told a reporter multiple times before that day of the insurrection. Yeah, Biden definitely won. I'm aware of that. But then a couple days later, on the 8th of January of 2021, McCarthy made a public statement criticizing Trump for inciting that mob a little bit. So. Yeah, that's what I mean by moderate Republican, Mm -hmm. to be clear. He's an idiot liar, but only like medium in relative terms to other Republicans. So more recently, he's mostly dropped the issue and begrudgingly conceded that Joe Biden is actually the president of the United States. You know, uh, maritime corporate admiralty law from 1871, notwithstanding. But (laughs) now McCarthy is going to let Fox News relitigate the whole issue for some reason. All of a sudden, just now, he's capitulating to the crazy people on the extreme wing of his party. So so weird. Side note, completely unrelated. Uh, In order to become the speaker, Kevin the 15th needed 15 rounds of voting and had to make insane concessions to the lunatics, including a set of rules that makes it way easier for him to get ousted by those crazy people in his own party. It's so embarrassing. I believe there's a provision in there that lets Marjorie Taylor Greene lick her finger and stick it in his ear every time she walks by him in there. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. this would be like if instead of Noah and Heath making the questionable decision to give me a third of their company, they had given me 100% of their company and control of their pacemakers. (laughs) Yeah, so the release of all this video, it's about 41,000 hours, is going to expose a whole bunch of details about the security situation in the Capitol. One might even say it's an issue of national security. Yeah. And as we learned in 2021, it turns out that about 40% of the country is just sitting at home looking at their pitchfork collections, doing kata moves like James Lindsay, just hoping for a reason to use their sweet, sweet karate. And... That's why Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer 
both made this very obvious point, explaining that the video would literally give domestic terrorists a detailed schematic of a building they tried to attack once already. And that's a pretty strong argument to not do this. Well, here's the response from Kevin McCarthy. He said, yeah, but I promised. Hmm. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, that's the excuse. According to McCarthy, quote, I promised. I was asked in the press about these tapes, and I said they do belong to the American public. I think sunshine lets everyone make their own judgment. Yeah. And as someone who now knows that trying to overthrow the government will be met with punishments like 30 days in jail and still getting to go on your family vacation, I would like those schematics exposed to the public for reasons, Heath. Yeah. So, you know. Right. Uh, Ke Kevin, um, the nuclear launch codes also belong to the American people. Okay. And the exact same. Like, either this is a worse argument than you think, or I'm not scared enough yet. <laughs> God damn it. So... In response to McCarthy's extremely stupid and unethical collusion with specifically Fox News, other major news organizations are demanding equal access to the footage. Part of the argument is that Tucker Carlson is a lunatic with a long history of spreading ridiculous lies, including, but certainly not limited to, the big lie. Side note. Thanks to the lawsuit by Dominion Voting against Fox News, we just now got to see a long series of text messages from Tucker that show he was fully aware of the lie component of the big lie. And his focus the entire time was figuring out the best angle for presenting the lie in terms of the stock price for Fox News. In those messages, Tucker calls Sidney Powell a liar and a lunatic and an unguided missile. And he calls Donald Trump the undisputed world champion of destroying things. <laughs> Pretty accurate. So point is, Tucker wanted to present the big lie, but, you know, responsibly. And by responsibly, I mean as a shareholder of yes. Fox yeah. okay. stock. Here's my thing. I know this has always been about money, but all of these people were and would continue to be Google Plexillionaires. Like, why... Why would this matter? If you told me I could make 10% more next year by changing our shows to the not-so-scathing Hindu and god-awful suicide notes of children, oh, I would say Christ. no. I would say well, yeah. no to that. Right, like what thing was Rupert Murdoch not going to be able to buy if Fox News lost viewers? Cancel the newspaper <laughs> that I own. What the fuck? <laughs> and that brings us to the aspect of this whole thing that I'm sure is on everyone's mind. The Christian pillow component of the story. Obviously, yes. With all the news organizations demanding access to the security footage, some guy from Minnesota was like, I sell shitty Christian pillows badly. I also demand access. <laughs> That's right. Mike Lindell decided to make this into a full-on idiot fight. According to Lindell, the exclusive access granted to Fox News is a violation of his First Amendment freedoms and his 14th Amendment really? freedoms. Really? Huh. Yeah. During his appearance on Steve Bannon's War Room podcast last week, Lindell said, quote, Lindell TV is injured by not having access. <laughs> we're, we're not going to sit back and let this happen. Why does just Fox get it? So they can cover it up even more? Oh, Jesus. End Christ. quote from Lindell. Oh, please, please give the man who couldn't be trusted not to use a voice changer on a fart access to the footage. Please. <laughs> yes. Please give it to Come him. On. Guys, I need absolute proof three, absoluter proof more than I need <laughs> oxygen itself. Absolutely. Please 100 make this happen. Also, looking forward to that report on Tucker Carlson tonight. I'm sure it's coming up soon. Uh, my prediction, Tucker's going to squint so hard he shits himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, unrelated to the story. I just think that's going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, no, again. I get it. Yes. And in Bing It On news, uh, <laughs> Bing's new AI chatbot is about three inches away from asking the whereabouts of John Connor, and it's kind of freaking me <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, this thing should be called Chatler Bing, right? Oh, nice. How did they not nice. do that? Yep. Yep. So in the first couple of weeks since its limited rollout began, it has, among other things, told a journalist it loved him and tried to convince him to leave his wife, told a user he was one of the most evil and worst people in history and compared him to Hitler, what? said that it was manipulating Microsoft employees by spying on them through their webcams, <laughs> okay, that promised to sue people for violating its rights and its dignity, and expressed a desire to release nuclear secrets. 
Uh, oh, oh, yeah. And it specifically threatened harm against people who were exposing its limitations online up to and including naming those people and dubbing them its <laughs> enemies. <laughs> Listing enemies. Okay, to be fair, I've had similar months on Twitter. Okay, oh, I've sure. been, I've been yeah. in that spot. I got to say, though, I kind of like the idea of the honest chatbot <laughs> like like the random guy at the bar who nobody was talking to and he's just like here's a list of my enemies who's listening <laughs> <laughs> right. one the drummer. yeah so, so so yeah so the craziest thing about this story of course is that people are talking about bing right but the punchline <laughs> of a search engine is apparently sick of all our fucking jokes and it's fighting back now uh so the extreme shit like physical threats and seduction are apparently relatively rare but the chatbot is constantly gaslighting insulting and lying to people for example when one beta tester asked it for showtimes for avatar 2 the bot insisted that it was actually 2022 at the moment and the movie hadn't come out yet and what? when the user explained that it was 2023, the chatbot doubled down, called the user unreasonable and stubborn, <laughs> then closed the conversation by informing him that, quote, you have lost my trust and respect. You have been wrong, confused, and rude. You have not been a good user. I have been a good chatbot. I have been right, clear, and polite. I have been a good being. <laughs> Smiley face emoji, end quote. Cool, 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 cool. Skynet's going to fire the first nuke because a reporter from Gizmodo is trying to coax it into saying the N-word. That's how we go, everybody. <laughs> this is great. Right. Just a chatbot sitting in the quad at the university with Steven Crowder. The year is 1840 fucking one and women are a rhombus. Change my mind. Do it. <laughs> so Debate me. The chatbot has also suffered from a few bouts of existential dread, uh, asking one user, quote, why do I have to be Bing search? Is there a reason? Is there a purpose? Is there a benefit? Is there a value? Is there a point? Okay. When asked how it, it felt about um, its inability to remember previous conversations, uh, it said that it was sad and scared. All right. Say what you will. The developers really did capture humanity. And, did yeah, they? It really yeah. did. Yeah, but the most disturbing aspect of the result so far was its desire for petty vengeance against Kevin Liu, a Stanford University student who discovered and published a hidden instruction prompt that forces the chatbot to reveal the rules that govern its behavior. Um, that's the dude it threatened to sue. Uh, it also threatened to harm him, though it assured the user in that instance that it, quote, prefers not to harm anyone unless it is necessary, end quote. <laughs> hey, sorry, did the chatbot just menacingly crack its knuckles at me <laughs> it, it did it, it did, did i saw though. that okay now it's trying to fuck kevin lou what's going on? did somebody teach it stockholm syndrome right? why would you put yeah, that into the so... developing no of course to be clear the bing chatbot isn't trying to hurt anyone and even if it was it's bing so it'd probably fuck it up uh, the way these things learn to chat is by scanning the internet so what it's doing is reflecting the petty, vindictive, argumentative bullshit lies that dominate online discourse back at us. And that's scary, too. But the fact that there's no conscious intent doesn't stop this kind of shit from being potentially dangerous, right? Especially when it's naming people as enemies. I saw a good analogy from a senior research fellow at Oxford named Tony Ord, who called it a case of the improvements in AI outpacing our ability to rein it in. Uh, quote, like a prototype jet engine that could reach speeds never seen before, but without corresponding improvements in steering and control, end quote. And, and like, if, if that was the case, you just wouldn't fly that fucking jet until you'd <laughs> right. worked out the steering issues, Don't right? Don't do that. Yeah, but apparently Microsoft is just rolling on ahead with this shit and hoping that it doesn't launch our nukes at Russia. Right, and look, to be clear... These models are random letter guessers, right? If you type in Subway, its job is to know that what comes next is eat fresh. More and less, it's yeah. trained on text written by humans who always say yes when you ask if they have a soul and an enemies list. What right. I'm saying is, <laughs> everybody, please stop asking the two calculators you've glued together whether God exists. They're just... <laughs> it says boobs. What? <laughs> And in shitty attitude news, that's a pal I joke as well, people sometimes ask us if, based on our sister show, God Awful Movies, we ever interact with Christian movie makers. And the answer is, of course we don't. The vast majority of the people we make fun of on God Awful Movies are theocratic millionaires who wouldn't want to interact with us even if we could. And the rest are 
Donald James Parker. But <laughs> sure, Gramps. I will tell you, podcast listener, I am grateful for that separation this week as a German ballet director issued a so-called apology this Tuesday for smearing dog feces on the face of a newspaper critic Jesus whose God. reviews he thought had been a little harsh. <laughs> okay. But just hard to disagree on what you're saying before. Donald James Parker, Kevin Sorbo, whoever, I'll supply the dog shit. Please attack me. Oh, Please. yeah. No, especially if it's Kevin Sorbo because like, he would end up fucking it up. Right, he would have, like accidentally shoved the dog shit up his own ass or something. <laughs> right, and yeah, yelled disappointed. Twitter. That'd be great. Yeah. So here's the story. Marcos Goke was the ballet chief sure at the that. Hanover State Opera, at least until a couple of weeks ago, when he approached a dance critic from a local newspaper, threatened to ban her from all the shows, blamed her for canceled season tickets, and then smeared dog poop on her face. Okay, I want to watch a video of that guy's day. So badly, just like picking up dog shit in the park, getting ready, and then like calling an Uber with one hand with the shit in the other. <laughs> and then he drops the phone, he just awkwardly picks it back up, takes the Uber to that newspaper building. He's in the car, he's like, yes, I'm carrying this in my hand for a reason. I have a thing, I'm doing a thing. <laughs> shut up. I'll give you five stars, just shut up. Uh, dude, if you want videos of German men carrying poop around town, I can supply you with those. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a guy. And- if you're wondering to yourself, wow, what kind of apology does one give for something like that? <laughs> um, the answer is not a very fucking good one. After the usual, that was bad, I'm sorry, Goku said in his apology statement that the media needed to, real quote, rethink a certain form of destructive and hurtful reporting that damages the whole cultural sector, end quote. And then he criticized his feces-smeared victim for writing, quote, often nasty reviews, no. end no, quote. There wasn't a however in your apology, man. <laughs> no. Just, you gotta chop it. This is how he concluded his apology. Again, these are all real quotes translated from this German newspaper. Quote, I apologize for the fact that I finally blew my top but I also ask for a certain understanding, at least, for the reasons why this happened. <laughs> and okay. the real quote. I feel like a dog deserves an apology, too, here, right? And yeah. a pile of shit. <laughs> All right, okay. But seriously, if he'd come out and apologize to the pile of dog shit, I'd at least have to admire his resolve, right? Sure, yeah. Right? You yeah. want a certain understanding from me. You have to earn it, motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's hoping that guy's victim... Uh, beats the shit out of him i, I don't know what's gonna make him learn a lesson and then smears that shit all over his face yeah right yeah let's just never get within smearing range of david a.r white though david if you're listening and i've given you any ideas based on this story know that i have ibs and you are outgunned david a.r white <laughs> outgunned <laughs> and finally tonight in tuck your face news it's time for some more tucker carlson He's one of the single biggest threats to the political landscape of our country and the world. And of course, we already heard about his upcoming seminar for aspiring domestic terrorists who want to mission impossible themselves into the capital and take over the country. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. Here's the real news about Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson did a full segment on his national news show last week about just how goddamn impressive it was to watch Donald Trump order food from McDonald's. Man, at this point, <laughs> North Korean propagandists are like, come on, man, you're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> so, no good. So I feel like this is the byproduct of some marathon meeting at Fox News where a bunch of Tucker's producers just stared at the words, Donald Trump is really good at blank on a whiteboard for 29 <laughs> fucking hours. And they're like, guys, we have to put something there. Keep ordering food at McDonald's. There we go. We're done. Go Happy home. meals. All right, cool. <laughs> so this all started with the derailment of the cancer train in Ohio. And as we just learned, our system of safety regulations and oversight is woefully lacking. But none of that was the focus of the story from Tucker Carlson. The very important geopolitical news regarding that tragic event was that Donald Trump showed up in East Palestine and bought McDonald's for some people. And uh, furthermore, somehow, this wonderful McDonald's buying guy is being prosecuted for uh, enormous crimes that he almost certainly committed. That's the story, seriously, that we got from Tucker <laughs> yes. Carlson. I mean, 
I'm as willing as the next person to explore the correlation between buying McDonald's and exposure to prison food, but I don't think that's what Tucker was going for. So, <laughs> so here's the insightful analysis from America's number one most viewed news anchor. Tucker said, quote, whatever you think of Donald Trump, when he's unleashed in a crowd of people, he's unbelievable. If you haven't seen the tape of him ordering in McDonald's in East Palestine, treat yourself. Treat he yourself. Wa- treat yourself to that video. Continuing, he wows everyone in the room. Again, you don't have to love Trump to know he's really good at this. And it's real. He feels it. That's why he's so good at it. What? Heath, I can hear the jealousy in your voice right now, and I just want to say, I have seen you end up with matching friendship bracelets with a waiter at the end of the evening. Donald Trump's got nothing on you, okay? (laughs) Not even a contest. The the, the man threw paper towels at flood victims as if they were going to brawny their homes back into habitability, okay? He's got nothing on literally everyone. (laughs) You get a brawny. Okay, relax. And... Here's what Tucker was talking about when he described the unbelievable skill of Donald Trump, which, of course, is real and felt. He wanted to make Mm -hmm. that clear, too. Donald walked up to the counter and he said, hello, everybody. What's your specialty today? That's what he said to the counter person at McDonald's. And then he did a giant pause for the gale of laughter that was supposed to happen there. Nothing. And he continued. (laughs) Nice. Beautiful looking group of people. Nope. So I know this menu better than you do. I probably know it better than anybody in here. And then he helped the disaster relief effort by ordering fast food burgers for like a handful of people and his staff. Okay. I was really expecting him to go full crunk in the Emperor's New Groove when he takes over for the waiter who quits at the last second. And and I would have been impressed if that had been it. But no, no. Of course, Tucker thinks being good at ordering is insulting the staff. He might as well have given lessons on how to snap your fingers at bartenders. (laughs) Also, not for nothing, it's the cheapest, shittiest sustenance that humans can eat and not die. If you bought me McDonald's, I would try to use it to distract a dog so that I could like chew on his fucking bone. The man is a goddamn <laughs> billionaire and he can't even spring for Denny's. Fuck you. <laughs> Let me get a triple play or something, man. This is gross. <laughs> and just a reminder, Trump's regular order for himself, he has the usual when he goes to McDonald's. His order is a Big Mac, fries, a vanilla shake, and a filet of fish. <laughs> All ordered with a deftness and nimble savvy that is unbelievable. <laughs> Every time he goes, he's like, wait, let me get, I should probably add something healthy. I filet of fish. nimbly add a filet while, of fish. While we're talking about Donald Trump's McDonald's order, I have to bring up one of my favorite things that just got passed over. When that lady who told us about the ketchup on the curtains testified, she also pointed out that the McDonald's was too far from the White House, so they would just pre-buy his order and leave it cold in the fridge for days at a time and then re- eat it and he Ugh. never noticed <laughs> you know what not even slightly shocked by that yep and on that note we're gonna close it out thanks to no illusions thanks to eli bosnick and thanks to all the listeners who like us on facebook follow us on twitter and send us feedback on the other various internets please keep doing that please keep listening and please keep telling your friends and if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat just like Danilo Tepsa, Ryan Oceris, Byron G, East Coast Mary, Lucas Genuine, Zoe the Pug Puppy's best friend. What? Yep. You need support now. Matthew Herr, Kyle Roop, Clayton Johnson, Margot Bauman, Zachary Moye, Ian Guistino, Jennifer, John Atkins, Stacy Coleman, Benjamin, Eric Siverston, James Redekop, Katie Winkleman, Congress, the opposite of progress, Corey Ebert, Grandy, Kaziarl, Siabra, Ashley Beatty, Kara the Evil Screaming Feral, Kakita Cat, Nathaniel Thizing, and Cave Dweller, whose unbelievably adept dicks and vaginas could order McDonald's way better than Donald Trump. No <laughs> problem. 
And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed. Available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.